a Bloodline Part 2 this coming Sunday. Um, but before I talk and share the why, I wanted to get maybe just a post from y'all and to see what did you think about yesterday? What did you take from yesterday? Um, are there things that maybe you want to go deeper in, grab an understanding of when it comes to generational curses, generational blessings? Let's just kind of open up the floor and talk a little bit about it. But we can start with what were some takeaways from yesterday's message that you felt like really moved you forward? I think for, I think for me, it was the, the shift in mindset of a temptation mm -hmm. that it's actually an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Never heard anyone ever say it that way. And so for us, like David and I were praying this morning and it was like shifting our verbiage to shift our mindset into yeah. that. Okay. I was tempted in this, but I know that's actually, if I look at it mm -hmm. the right way, a push towards an advancement. That's do, you, a big shift. do you understand that, that that's not a, a make you feel good perspective. It is the position of righteousness. Yes. Yeah, right. yes. Right. If I am righteous now because of Christ Jesus and my mind is now the mind of Christ, mm -hmm. then temptation itself yeah. is only a test yep. or a threat. Yep. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it. It's, it's nothing, it's not, it's not, it's nothing else. It's, mm -hmm. it's not because I'm a bad person or I shouldn't have been, you yeah. know, we have all those moments, right? But when you look at the holistic part of who you are as a Christian and you look at what you are from your seat, then you got to look at it from the right space, which is what you just said. It's not, this isn't who I am. This is a, this is an opportunity. It's a moment. Yeah, that's good. Anybody else? Yeah, for me, like, I literally, I kept thinking about my boys the entire time, the entire message. And so I'm just excited that I have the tools, I have the knowledge on how to make sure that they can laugh at, mm -hmm. <laughs> like when you're talking about your kids being able to laugh at temptation, yeah. laugh at those things. Yeah, my boys will be empowered, too, to be able to, they'll Ooh. know what what may be, what may have happened in the past, but that that's not their future. Yeah. So good. Yeah. That's so good. I think so much on that, like, I know for, for my family, like, there's so much stuff that's like hidden in the dark mm -hmm. that nobody talks about. Yeah. And then it was like all of a sudden, when I got older, I learned about like little pieces of it. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Fast. And then I started like Putting piecing together. stuff yeah. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, why didn't you DNA? just tell me that? Yeah. You know? Because that probably would have helped me Literally. to move faster mm -hmm. through yeah. some of this stuff. Yeah. You know, and how much stuff do we hide? That alone, like you're talking about, Shamika, mm, the so fact good. that you're bringing it to the, to the light, yeah. not mm. to hide it for shame, but to bring it to light so that they have actually an ability to move forward right. in it, you know? Yeah. Right. yeah, that's good. I think one thing that really caught my attention was, as I feel like I almost saw a lot of people feel released of pressure yeah. when you gave the visual of yeah. yes. the generations yes. yeah. and how someone can be so stuck on why am I dealing with this? I've done everything I can do to shake this. I'm just not good enough. What am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of people were able to see that they are not the problem, but they have an opportunity to break the problem. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I feel like there was, in a moment where there should be a lot of like doubt and oh my gosh, oh, this is unfixable. It's like, no, I have the opportunity yeah. to change this for yeah. what, for the future. Yeah. And so I know I felt released because there's yeah. there's a lot of um, on my mom's side a lot of drinking problems and mom's dad drank himself to death and um, oh. and we've had three people on my mom's side that have drank themselves to death and it's just uh, even if I personally don't struggle with it I know what's been in the past and how it the devil just wants it to stay attached. To maybe the next generation that comes from me, yeah. and I have an opportunity to to break it, yeah. and it's just I I really resonated with that portion of the message. That's so good. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, such I, an awesome um, 
such an awesome illustration mm -hmm. and such a powerful example of being able to actually to see it. Yeah. Yeah. So I am I am continually in awe of how God will allow you to be able to depict that, whether it's through the seeds, which I, I may just say your picture because they grew. I don't know if anybody with water oh, on them. Yeah. Yeah. No water, no sunlight. I, no water, no sunlight, but it, it, you got, se you got like, several uh, several sprouts. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that picture is the I looked at it. It was yeah. bird seed, y'all, because oh. it's no bed no seed. <laughs> 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 but yeah, God, God is doing some awesome stuff. That's what happened when you're an apostle. Um, anyway. <laughs> we're not going to make this stuff. It's called, you know, being able to call stuff to grow in a void, you know? Oh, uh, but, uh, oh. Amen. Don't uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, just, he just gives you some, just some dynamic, um, some dynamic depictions of, of being able to make stuff become clear to people. Mm -hmm. And yes. so uh, seeing that visual of the generations was just like, okay, yeah, that's mm -hmm. why that's why it skipped over it me mm -hmm. like that okay I see why yeah, yeah. okay it hit my sister but it didn't yeah. hit me or this hit me but it yeah. didn't hit that person and this yeah. you know so that was like that was huge and then you know just yeah that was that was just mind-blowing to me so thank you once Come again on. what made me excited was um, like seeing um, how you use Ferris uh -huh. as like the person who is like starting over mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that made me excited for my kids that I, like, what I'm learning now, I can teach them how to not fall into that temptation yeah. and not start the cycle over again. And I've never heard anybody explain it yeah. that Come way. Come on. Yeah. And so, yeah. I was like, you teach <laughs> Kyla was like, are you okay? I was like, I'm better than okay. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really appreciated how you spoke on the moms and the single moms and like the yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. ambassador children yeah. right? yeah. or the whatever you hope. And how you, I've never gotten that revelation of David. Like I was like, oh snap, it makes sense why he wasn't with the brothers. Like, oh, like he's working like oh, yeah. It makes sense. And so, but I knew moms in that room, I, kn I felt them in that room, in that mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. And I had a friend behind me and her son, it was her first time, his first time at church. And he was in tears. Yeah. Wow. And I was yeah. like, this is for them. This is for yeah. them. Yeah. Like, I knew yeah. the whole time, I'm like, exactly. so this good. is for yes. them because wow. that is a weight that has been on her for a long time. Mm -hmm. And that's her only son. And he's wow. older now. And I'm sure there's wow. a, there is a struggle of identity yeah. in his life. So for him to hear that, I knew, I'm like, this so is for them. Yeah. That was so awesome. And then the depiction of the four generations, like, I literally went home. I'm blessed to know my generations, by, like, to know of. And when I went through, like, my deliverance, I went back and I did the whole family tree. I talked That's to my great. parents and I asked them, like, who was my great-grandma? What was her problem? Who was my great-grandpa? What was his problem? I found out things that I never knew of at 31. I'm like... My what was a what? Yeah. My who was a what? What? Yeah. Okay. And I wrote it down and I literally was like, Lord, thank you that this person that did this won't fall on my kids. Mm -hmm. Thank you that this person who did this won't fall on my kids. And I like went back and I was like, let me just repent for them real quick. And let me like, it just gave me a reminder and a visual of like the generation, how it still can try, but like the redemption of like God and how he redeems us into his covenant. And I like how you said, go back. For when we were doing communion, the blood before us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and moving forward yeah. because I literally said, Lord, redeem the blood of the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, redeem that blood. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't even know. Yeah, yeah. they didn't they know. Didn't know. They had no so idea. Good. Like, my mom had no idea. And I had to be the one to get delivered from things for her to see, like, oh. Mm -hmm. You know? That's so awesome. That was really good. Technology is the revelation of <coughs> the Godology. Like, God uses tech to show you the progression of his mind. Because there's nothing that's ever existed in the mind of a person and an invention that did not come from God. Mm -hmm. So wherever the world is, is where God is mm -hmm. in his creative process. So spiritual revelation is at the same speed of what's existing, right? So you can look at America's behind, but you can look at like, um, China, 
China is where the mind of God creatively, like at, at, the, at this present time. Spiritually, it's the same thing. If you look at the people that are allowing the revelation to move forward in the spirit, that's just, that's just where God has decided, I'm just, I'm ready to release that nugget, like, like on the earth. It's important that we don't bash parents or grandparents for the lack of. Yeah. It, they just didn't know, yeah. right? It, yeah. Like it wasn't dropped. Mm -hmm. So I, I, wanted, I wanted to talk because I, I, didn't, I didn't even get like halfway through <laughs> the real message. Yeah. Let me go back to this one. Um, <clears throat> Jesus is in the garden. I mean, Jesus is in the test, right? Mm -hmm. 40 days. And Jesus is like, I'm here to sever an umbilical cord. And he starts with like the, the last test is promotion mm -hmm. and elevation and false perspective that you can have something when in reality he already had it, mm -hmm. right? The kingdom, the kingdom, the king, this is his kingdom. <laughs> can't give me something that I own, right? It was important, remember that. You can't give me something that I already, not own, I started. Mm -hmm. The first temptation was food. Take, take this and turn it into, like, I know you're hungry. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus says, well, I got to correct this because the first person gave up their right to rule through food. Adam. Mm -hmm. Adam gave up the right to rule through food. So Jesus reverses the mm -hmm. curse yeah. by submitting the stomach back into its right position. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted, I wanted to talk a little bit about this because the enemy will meet you and tempt you at your gut. You should check your gut. Um, your gut will lead you where the enemy wants you or your gut will lead you where righteousness is leading you, okay? Every person, if I sat down and asked you, where is your money go? Your money goes to where, your money goes wherever your gut is telling it to go, right? Whatever your appetite is, whatever you long for is what we spend money on. It's the same thing with our spiritual walk and our passions. The enemy will always attack the gut, right? To, and so the reason why this is so important with us dealing with bloodlines, if we don't correct it now, right? Whether you have a child or not, before a child is born, what's already in you has already been passed in them. Why? Because of the umbilical cord. So it don't matter if I cut the umbilical cord on the outside, it's already been established and passed on on the inside. So I, I want us to get excited about it because it's, we are correcting that time in the womb. What's being passed from, from one generation to the next generation, restoring the right umbilical cord, right? The right umbilical cord, which is like the Holy Spirit in every person feeding us God and God alone. God and God alone. Bloodlines are opportunities, right, for all of us to move back from one, from many into one, one bloodline, Jesus. This Sunday, I want to, I don't know if I'll call it, I might just call it check your gut. Um, this week, check your gut. Right, like, it's, it's why we say, like, I had, I just had a feeling, had a gut feeling, right? It's the same reality that um, a shepherd, a true shepherd will take a staff and he will, you know, a staff is like this. And then he will take, when a sheep gets out of line, he will take the staff and take the hook, grab it by his neck. And then after he does it, he will, he will punch it in its gut. 
because it's a sign of conviction. Staff is authority. Mm. It represents the spirit. And so pay attention to your convictions. They're punching your gut. Mm. It is letting you know that you are either moving in a space you shouldn't be moving or something's trying to enter mm. your gut to lead you somewhere you shouldn't be. Um, I want us to, I want us to, I felt like there was so many things I didn't get to talk through and I wanted to get a post of access. Let me get a post in the room and just see um, if you felt like a part to talking about the bloodline would be helpful. Um, so do y'all feel like this Sunday, if I go in a little bit deeper, it would kind of bring this to a close before we move on yes. to, to the next thing? Yes. 